These are Starship's 29 Raptor rocket engines. But how does SpaceX manage to start 29 engines, and why did older rockets had far fewer? In this episode, you will understand the complexity, precision, and timing of the Starship ignition sequence, and why it isn't just a matter of turning them on at the same time. This is the amazing engineering of Starship's engine's ignition sequence. This is the Saturn V in action. Before Starship flew for the first time, the Saturn V was the most powerful and potent rocket ever made by humanity for a long time. This title is due to its five monstrous Rocketdyne F1 engines. Each of these engines weighed nine tons, consuming 3,900 pounds of liquid oxygen and 1,700 pounds of fuel every second. They operated at temperatures of 5,792 degrees Fahrenheit and produced 1.5 million pounds of thrust each. In addition to the enormous vibrations and deafening noise these engines produced during its operation, they had a vectoring system to keep the enormous Saturn V on its correct trajectory to orbit. But this force, all concentrated in a single engine, brought several challenges. The technology of the time, as well as the rocket's design, did not allow the Saturn V to have several smaller power engines doing the same job. Surprisingly, these engines were used only once and worked for 150 seconds, which is the time it took for all the fuel in the first stage to run out. As soon as the first stage ended, the section containing the five engines separated from the rocket and fell towards the Atlantic Ocean, where these engines are still located today. Nowadays, there is no theoretical limit to the number of engines that can be placed on a rocket. In fact, it is cheaper to have several smaller power engines on the same rocket than one or a few with much higher power. In addition, the production time, maintenance, inspection, and testing of each engine become much more efficient, as there are many of less complexity instead of just one of great complexity. SpaceX has made good use of this principle. For example, the Falcon 9 has nine Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. Each engine is capable of generating 147,000 pounds of thrust. As there are nine, this totals 1,323,000 pounds of thrust. The Falcon Heavy, which has a higher lifting capacity, has 27 engines. They basically join three Falcon 9s to create a new, higher capacity rocket. But the Super Heavy Booster has 29 Raptor engines on the same stage. However, the larger the number of engines, the more other problems arise. In particular, a procedure called engine ignition sequence must be carefully respected. SpaceX has continually redefined the boundaries of space travel and rocketry. Such monumental milestones deserve more than just admiration. And for those who want to be a part of this journey and commemorate SpaceX's legacy, our engineering secret store is launching a unique collection of SpaceX-related products. We have miniatures with incredible details, intricate assembly kits, t-shirts, posters, phone cases, and more. Grab an exclusive 10% discount by clicking the link in the description. We offer fast free shipping within the US. To explain the importance of the engine ignition sequence, let's start with the Space Shuttle as an example. With 15 seconds to go, a lot of water began to be launched on the launch pad to absorb vibrations and prevent them from causing damage to the vehicle itself. With 10 seconds to go, four spark igniters on the platform began to ignite the fuel. With six seconds to go, the three main engines were started. Here's where it gets interesting. The engines were not turned on at exactly the same time. They were turned one at a time, separated by an interval of 120 milliseconds between each one. The reason was to avoid excessive vibrations, unbalancing, and a few other variables to further reduce risks. In the contrary, the auxiliary solid fuel engines had to be turned on precisely at the same time, and various calculations, as well as various computers, were dedicated to ensuring the simultaneous ingestion of both auxiliary rockets. Any delay between the ignition of one and the other, and the space shuttle would run the serious risk of becoming unbalanced and causing a major accident still on the launch pad. With a Falcon 9, something similar happens. 
However, as it has more engines, nine in total, of which eight are arranged in a way that describes a circle, their ignition is done in pairs, separated by an interval of 120 milliseconds between each one. So, it takes half a second to turn on the nine engines of the Falcon 9, although it seems to the human eye that they all turn on at the same time. The reason for this ignition sequence is practically the same. To avoid unbalancing, avoid vibrations, keep the loads on the vehicle within limits, and a few other factors. And if you're wondering about the importance of respecting this ignition sequence, just remember what happened in 1959 with the Titan I rocket. Shortly after ignition, the rocket began to vibrate a lot, with pieces flying in all directions. Due to the absurd vibrations, the flight termination system was activated, creating a huge explosion with the rocket still on the launch pad. In the case of the Super Heavy, you can imagine how much precision is needed to turn on 29 engines at maximum power. Therefore, the correct distribution of engine force for Super Heavy must be done very well. There is a piece called the thrust puck. It is responsible for transmitting the force exerted by the engines to the booster's walls in the most correct way possible. As there are 29 engines, forming three rings, the same ignition sequence used in the Falcon 9 would vary by 2,000 milliseconds, or two seconds, until all the engines were turned on. Ignition sequences must be done very carefully. However, if the procedure takes too long, it can also cause huge vibrations, oscillations, imbalances, and even damage the launch pad. It can also compromise the rocket's range, since these few seconds spend precious units of fuel with the rocket still on the platform. In addition, in the event of a failure of one or multiple engines, some projects also employed a shutdown sequence. Perhaps you've heard of the N-1, the largest rocket in history designed by the Soviets. It had 30 engines that could not be properly tested, because they used pyrotechnic valves instead of hydraulic ones. These pyrotechnic valves could only be used once, and all attempts always ended in a huge explosion. Due to the particularity of the engine valves, the unsophisticated flight computer of the time, and the fact that the engines did not have a gimbal mechanism, the N1 employed a shutdown sequence for the engines in case of a failure of one or multiple engines. So, if this engine turned off due to failure, its counterpart would also be turned off, and so on, in an attempt to balance the rocket in flight. But as computers are much more sophisticated and advanced today, it is no longer necessary to turn off one engine if its counterpart happens to fail. Computers resort to the gimbal mechanism and the power management of the other engines to keep the rocket balanced. In fact, Computers detect, prevent, and correct hundreds of problems that occur or threaten to occur on any rocket and correct them, ensuring the success of the mission. If you enjoyed this type of content, consider becoming a channel member. Starting at only $2.99 a month, you can get early and ad-free video access, exclusive wallpapers, and a lot more benefits on higher categories. Choose the Member category by clicking the Join button below or via our Patreon. Thank you for watching.